<clears throat> Turn that music down just a little bit so we're not talking over it. <clears throat> Still really dark. I'll have to figure out something. I think it has to do with just the <clears throat> the quote unquote optimization, even though it doesn't look optimized. Because um, what I'm seeing on screen is <clears throat> still a lot lighter than what I'm seeing pop up on Twitch. But oh well. Anyway, <clears throat> this is where we left off <clears throat> from last time. Um, I'm, I want to change some things. I'm not happy with, with her uh, gesture. Um, <clears throat> Let's make that a little bigger for everyone. Um, yeah, I'm really not happy with her gesture. Uh, it it feels stiff. It, eh, a lot of things. Um, I don't like the shape the hair is creating with that arm. It looks weird. Um, <clears throat> would have been great if I had come to that conclusion before painting everything, but I didn't. So. Sometimes you just have to say, you know what, we're going to start over, sort of. <clears throat> so this was my original thumbnail um, that I just kind of blew up and had started tracing off for this one, <clears throat> right? A um, lot of things I don't like about it. So... I changed it, um, and some of this stuff will need to get refined more in terms of the gestures, but overall I'm liking it more. Um, changed the scale of some things, pushed a little harder on the foreground, middle ground, background, um, which ultimately I will push even more as we push her back, push them back a little bit, <clears throat> and get a bit more of a read on all that stuff. Um, let's crop this because we don't need any of that extra shit outside the borders. <clears throat> um, so, this is kind of, this is where I'm gonna start it over again, right? Um, and compositionally, I think I'm liking this more. I'll have to f figure out exactly how to make this flow feel a little better, but I can do that a bit with the lighting. Um, so, <clears throat> that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start to work all of this stuff out a bit more. <clears throat> so 
So let's start. Start back here. Oops. <clears throat> and there are things that, like, I really should have kind of nailed down before. Um, meaning in that previous version in terms of like really solidifying her uh, perspective it was I was having to kind of just keep correcting things as I was painting and, and that's not really a good place to be in um, <clears throat> you really really should be dealing with that kind of stuff um, you know perspective issues and all that um, in the drawing you don't want to you don't want to sit there having to deal with it later on um, mostly because like you change one thing and then you realize oh shit that's affecting this other thing too so you change that, and then it's affecting this other thing, and, and it just you end up having to repaint stuff, which takes a lot longer. <clears throat> takes a lot longer than just re-sketching. So Well, I'm glad you could join. I know, like, you can always catch it after the fact, but I know it sort of defeats the purpose in terms of, like, not being able to interact. So... I'm, I'm glad you could join us. Um, this is kind of like refining my rough a little bit and then uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I might tighten it up a little bit after this, but not entirely necessary. As long as I get the right vibe here. So this was where, like, her gesture was, um, <clears throat> her gesture was a little stiff, right? Um, Yeah, I mean, it's 
on one hand, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's too bad I can't do longer videos on Instagram, which I know I can. I could do IGTV and stuff, but what I don't like is that they, you basically have to do them vertical. Now, granted, I can always just turn the video, because otherwise you start having to produce videos specifically for IGTV, and that's just a huge pain in the ass. Um, but, uh, and at the same time, like, I, I like the kind of short, um, time frame on Instagram. It has a nice sort of simplicity to it. There are plenty of other long form options, right? Again, these are all the little things you really want to work out at this stage. You don't want to sit there having to repaint all this stuff. It's just a waste of time. I mean, obviously, later, if you see something where you're like, damn, that's not right, correct it. Yeah, unless it's something you can live with. You know, um, oftentimes I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist as much as time will allow, so I don't like to just I don't like to just you know deal with it. I'm actually, um, I'd rather change it and have it <laughs> be correct. For better or worse. Unless things are meant to be a little wonky. Which... In my stuff they rarely are. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... When I... You know, when I... Uh, do video of drawings or whatever, um, I just, you know, do a time lapse, I just speed them up so that they fit inside a minute. Um, but if you're doing the real time ones, which I, I will do, my little, you know, minute of zen thing, or it's just nice real time drawing for a minute, um, then yeah, I really, like, there's a reason that I will tend to post, um, usually me drawing part of the face because I can get a decent amount of that done in a minute, right? Because um, it's just a matter of kind of a few marks. Um, whereas other, other areas of the sketch might take longer and it might not, and a minute of that might not be interesting. So you definitely have to kind of take into uh, consideration how much you're getting done um, and it's a it's a different beast but it's fun it like I don't know it's a nice kind of little different direct way of drawing that I rather enjoy
Hello, thanks for joining. <clears throat> I'm not sure how to say your name, so... <laughs> it's too hectic. <laughs> Now a lot of times when I'm doing my roughs, there there is a certain amount that I like to, you know, leave for discovery later on. Um, when I'm painting, I mean obviously there's a whole lot. There's color and lighting and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> But it varies. Sometimes if, if, if I know that I can easily figure out some part of the anatomy, then I'm not going to worry about, um, like, really fleshing it out in the sketch. But I want to make sure that the core gesture is there. I don't want to... There are certain things that I don't want to have to struggle with, um, you know, because if, if, it's, if the core gesture isn't correct, then a uh, whole bunch of other stuff could be wrong. Um, but <clears throat> I don't need to get every single detail. Um, you know, in this in this stage um, we do want to start to get her Spines, since so many sea creatures seem to have them. Um, advice on how to draw without reference, um, have reference? <laughs> um, I have some reference up on my other screen, I just, I don't have the rights to the images, so I can't, like, show them on the stream, um, but they're mostly, uh, environmental reference. Um, the reason that I can draw a figure and, and honestly, like, chances are if I posed someone in this pose, I would see some things that I'm doing wrong, but I'm okay with that to a degree. Like, it doesn't, I don't need it to be, like, absolutely perfect. I'm not trying to, like, trick people into thinking I use reference for the figure. I just, I enjoy the challenge of not doing that, but the reason I can um, draw without reference for figures is because I've drawn from life and studied anatomy in that sense uh, and drawn from reference a lot. 
Uh, and I do at work, right? Because at work, like when we're sketching, we have to get likeness of actors and stuff like that. So constantly using reference. Um, and if, if you're doing that and you're not <laughs> learning and getting, you know, better to the point where you don't need reference for everything, then you're probably doing it wrong. Um, so most of it comes down to just paying attention, to be honest, like, <clears throat> you don't want to, a lot of people will go on automatic, you know, when they're, when they're using reference and, and they're not like really paying attention and committing things to memory. Um, and that's not going to do you any good. You know, if there are parts of, of the figure that you struggle with, then, then take the time to do studies of that. Using reference, drawing from life, whatever. And, and so that you can understand what's going on anatomically and hopefully struggle with it less in the future. <clears throat> um... You know, it really is kind of that simple. <clears throat> there isn't, like, any trick to it. It's just putting in the time to, to study things properly. Um, and then there's also the aspect of like sort of training your your memory I guess your ability to kind of recall things that you've seen um, I'd <laughs> I don't really know what the techniques are for that. Um, it's something that I've always kind of pushed myself to do. And mostly it was because I thought, you know, when I was looking at comics and stuff as a kid, I thought they drew everything out of their head. I didn't know that they were using reference for everything. So I thought, oh damn, if I want to be able to do this, because at one point I wanted to do comics when I was younger, as I'm sure we all did. <clears throat> the only reason I don't now is because that shit's really damn hard. <laughs> like, I applaud the people that do, uh, that do it regularly, or the people that set out to, you know, draw their own book and, and they actually achieve it. They, man, so much work. I've tried... And I'll, every time I get, like, three pages in, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm kind of done. Especially the, the people that actually, like, write and illustrate their own stuff. That's tricky, because you're so close to the project. Like, I can storyboard other people's ideas. No problem. I can even do, like, comics of other people's ideas. But when I write it and try and illustrate it, man, it has not worked out for me in the past. One of these days, maybe. I would almost just rather write it as a novel and call it done. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, what do I work as? I work as a sketch artist and illustrator for advertising. So, um, we help design movie posters and billboards and all that stuff. All entertainment-based stuff. Video game stuff, movie stuff, TV stuff. Um, any, any kind of advertising that is printed, uh, we help design it.
he is a legend but he has drawn so much from reference he draws from life constantly and he still uses reference not for the final piece but he will do studies like you know believe me <laughs> none of this stuff completely happens in a vacuum um, <clears throat> now granted his memory clearly amazing but that's something I think that is something he's even said like he's always been able to kind of recall something and it is easier once you've drawn something it's much easier to recall it rather than just you know remembering it cold so to speak um, <clears throat> but uh, he does have quite the ability to recall some insane details um, which is pretty awesome um, and you know some of that comes from like if there's things you want to remember what helps is understanding them understanding you know how they work what things are for you know like I would love to be able to tell you like oh this part of the ship is is this and you know like and and it does this and I but I don't know that stuff and luckily like I'll just be indicating this ship. I don't need to know much beyond the foremast and mainmast and whatever. Like, <laughs> plus, if you've looked into how much goes into <laughs> one of these ships, like, unless it's something you really love and are like obsessed with, um, no, there, there's so much shit on these things. Like, how the hell did they even keep all that organized? I don't know. <clears throat> you know, and ultimately I'm actually going to kick this thing back in the fog, so... Whatever. Yes, follow that link that Autumn posted. That's uh, that's the agency that we work for, so you can see all the different ad campaigns we've had a hand in. <coughs> Basically, if there's a big property out there, chances are we're working on it. Um, Because that's what we do. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's not always about 100% accuracy. It's about getting the the shape language and the feeling of the thing. Because sometimes getting the, the way something feels to us is better than being 100% accurate. Um, and that's, that's what I tend to lean on a lot. Like when I remember something, I'm like, what's what's the feeling of that thing? How does that thing feel to me? And what's going to help me achieve that? You know, because if I go for complete accuracy, one, oftentimes you're going to end up putting in a whole lot more detail and information than you actually need. And it might not help the piece. Uh, two, someone might look at it and be like, I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me. And then you're like, well, yeah, but I referenced it. And they're like, yeah, but it doesn't feel right. 
Because no one remembers, unless they have a photographic memory, which most of us don't, what we, we remember is the feeling of something. You know? <clears throat> so, um, it's, it's not always important to, you know, just get, like, crazy amounts of detail in something. Like, I can get there. It'll take me a little while to kind of work my way to that level of depth, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I can, and sometimes I do. computer is not happy right now. This is not cool. Start getting our smarmy pirates here. Pirate poachers. Um, I try to pretty much stream on on Mondays, which is really when I have the time, because <laughs> um, I'm not at work on Mondays currently. Um, so yeah, and, and the rest of the time I, I don't really don't always have the energy to stream, you know, after work after I've been drawing and painting for 10 hours a day uh, then when I get home I don't always want to do more sometimes I want to <clears throat> but not always <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's give this guy a little more of a layered kind of deal.
This is like... Lagging on me. And I have no idea why. It's like all of a sudden it just decided, you know what? This standard round brush is too much. There we go. Sort of. It's saving right now, but... Still... My old computer might need to be replaced soon. Autumn keeps trying to get me to go to a PC. And I just might have to, because get the kind of power I'm wanting from a computer I'd have to pay like 10 grand for a Mac which is just stupid <clears throat> and these days it seems like they're fairly interchangeable in a lot of ways Yeah, and just, you know, being able to do a setup that would uh, um, be able to do all this stuff, you know, like paint on a large Photoshop file while streaming and recording the stream, because I was like, you know what, I'm going to turn the record off because at least, hey, it it streams even though even though the uh, stream isn't quite as you know it's compressed but right now my poor little unhappy computer <laughs> and of course like Photoshop files just get bigger and bigger right and I'm so used to working uh, in print where we just deal with like ridiculously high resolutions you know that uh, Avengers Endgame poster that I worked on the IMAX one um, the full file was 18,000 pixels square at 300 dpi so, you know, anyone that works in concept art is like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? <clears throat> Want them to have those big, like, thigh high boots. It's like, Spanish whatever's I don't know what they're called Yeah, for a while, you know, I feel like, like, yes, Apple was charging more, but you still got, like, good stuff. Uh, but then somewhere along the lines, they got 
too caught up in aesthetics and they stopped paying as much attention to what was inside the machine and so you were just like it got to the point where you were getting stuff that was like three generations back whereas before it wasn't as bad you know um <clears throat> ah thanks for the host awesome um, yeah, I feel like it didn't used to be as bad, maybe because things weren't moving ahead in, like, such crazy leaps and bounds. Um, now a new generation of something comes out and it's, like, just ridiculously better than the generation before it, you know? Whereas Mac is, Apple is still trying to do the whole, like, iterative upgrade you know they're like well yeah we could put the latest stuff in there but then what would we do for our next generation so we're not gonna put the latest and greatest you know never mind that by the time the thing comes out it wouldn't be the latest and greatest anymore anyway so it's like when they start designing something they're already using things that are a generation back, and by the time it comes out, it's, like, way behind. So, that's kind of lame, and, and their prices just keep going up. Um, for stuff that, again, is still out of date. So, you know, I love my iMac Pro at work. Mostly because I didn't have to pay for it thing is so overpriced. Gets the job done and crushes large files. I love it. But for home, you know, I could spend that same amount of money and get something probably two or three times as fast. So, makes sense to me. Autumn, we might be building a PC together. <laughs> The other thing when you're <clears throat> um, drawing out of your head, right? When you're drawing without... Dude, why is it lagging so much? Pissing me off. Um, when you're drawing from imagination, uh, it's, it's a good idea to kind of have a, a good mental model you know, like, that you can kind of lean on, whether that's, you know, like, okay, a seven head tall figure, and this kind of, these kinds of features, this kind of body type, like, something that just gives you a place to start, you know, Dude, I kind of feel like this guy needs an eye patch, I think he might, um, because with a good mental model, um, you can, yeah, that's a good scallywag look, um, and he can have a couple of good scars, too. Uh, yeah, you can always then take that mental model and kind of push and pull the proportions, push and pull the features, but at least something where you have a good understanding of what's happening in the anatomy. You know, and so sometimes that's just like 
drawing this sort of same proportions over and over and over, you know? Um, and that's fine, like, we want to start somewhere. Um, Got to be careful not to do too modern of a <laughs> design on these boots. That's not what these guys are. Um. Alright. <clears throat> this guy I want to be a little more of a... of a brute. Not like, you know, sparkling wine, but... Brutish, a heavy. He's the dumb muscle. He's like the meathead. He's got his bandana on. Oops. Um. He's got this flattened nose that's probably been broken countless times and all the brawls that he gets in. He's missing a couple of teeth. And he's the guy that just goes everywhere in a... he just wears a vest, right? He's a tough guy. He doesn't like, need layers, doesn't matter how cold it is. But I don't want him to be like, you know, he's not a body sculptor. That's a more modern thing. So I want him to have more of that kind of like old school sort of strongman type of thing where they were really strong and they were big, but they weren't like crazy cut, you know, because that kind of information hadn't really come about yet. But even though they weren't cut, man, I mean, some people were, but usually that was genetics, you know, if they were, like, super sculpted. Um, but those old strongmen, man, they could do some amazing stuff. And a lot of the big meatheads, though, they might be stronger now. They can't use their bodies in the same way. Which is too bad. Yeah, when, when you get into more dynamic poses, um, it then it really depends on your understanding of um let just put his thumb over here of uh kinetics you know you need a good understanding of the kinetics of the body and how each part of the body affects 
another part, you know? Because it does. I mean, you... You start tilting your head around. Like he's got a big... He's gonna have, like, a big, uh... Pike. I was thinking about a harpoon thing, but I, I want these guys a little... A little less prepared, even than that. Um... So he's gonna have more of a, a boarding pike, which was really just a, you know, a spear, but it didn't have, um, it didn't have like a broad head on it, right? It was actually meant to, uh, like the, you'll see, when I get to it, I'll explain it a little bit more. Um, the uh, the head of it went seamlessly kind of into the uh, right so you had a metal spike basically on the end of it but they were pretty seamless because out at sea you didn't want salt and water to get into things and and cause them to rust and get damaged um, so the boarding pikes usually had a pretty seamless uh, transition from from the wood. Right, from the wood here to the to the tip. Um, And one thing I had learned a little while back from some research is those big broad belts that the pirates, not just pirates, sailors in general, wore, uh, actually had a purpose. And, and they were basically like a modern day weight belt. Um, and it, it was basically to avoid, because they were constantly, they were hauling on heavy lines and lifting heavy cargo. So it was basically to avoid uh, hernias, right? Kept kept everything in where it was supposed to. So these big, broad belts that helped distribute the weight. Um, so yes, they actually did have a purpose. And most sailors had one usually, you know, fairly small gold earring, which was meant to, in the event of their death, pay for their burial. Because they were superstitious and religious people um, and believed that they should be buried on land. Thanks for joining, um, and again, thanks for the host. Hopefully uh, you can join again sometime, and also you can always catch this uh, after the fact if you want to kind of see where it ends up. I want this guy to... Like I said, he's a little more of a rough and tumble kind of dude, so uh, he's going to have, like, lighter, thinner shoes on, I think. Simpler kind of leather moccasin type things. 
Um, I don't know how much we'll see that leg, so we won't worry about it right now. Alright, save this. Uh, restroom break. Back in like two minutes. Uh, this dude in here. The guy was like, um, you guys, you have a problem. Interesting silhouette on on this guy's face. Maury, hello, sir. Well, they're not surrounding them. The idea is that these pirates, these like mermaid poachers, so to speak, because mermaid scales are extremely valuable and they decided they want to get a whole treasure trove of them. So they've heard tales, legends, about where they might find some. And they heard that they're, you know, they're pretty big, so be careful. And they see this one that's, uh, they don't know it, but she's kind of a young one. And they think, they're not that big. We got this, no problem. Uh, and then it turns out they were maybe a little misinformed as to how big they actually are. 
and maybe a little overconfident. Um, much uh, to their dismay. Yeah, when, you know, Big Mama comes to defend the younger one. And in my mind, like, mermaids, they're not immortal, but they live a very long time. You know, and they do get pretty huge in this world. Um, if they are allowed to live long enough. Thanks. Yeah, the the idea is that this is like, you know, a few hundred years or more later when mermaids have become the hunted. Um, and so they've kind of retreated uh, into the hard to reach places. of the world. And a little more active pose here. Yeah, because in the last one, the idea behind it is that, you know, I mean, mermaids are not, they're not good. They're, they're kind of selfish and, and petty and primal and they have this power over men that they completely abuse. Um... And so they just kind of do whatever they want, and the idea is that at a certain point, humans got sick of it, and basically started devising ways to hunt them, and, and then as the mermaid numbers started to dwindle, they start to uh, retreat to the far reaches so at this point they're they're rare and that's why their scales are are a hot commodity more valuable than gold are mermaid scales
and see if this guy is sheathed or not. He might. I don't really feel like. Eh, don't really need to. Yeah, that's uh, that was done by Donato. Um, I know exactly which piece you're talking about. Um, I love that painting, um, Donato uh, Giancolo painted that one, and it's pretty damn cool. I remember years ago, uh, it might be on Muddy Colors, maybe where he posted a, uh, some process of it. Now he had like, I think he had gone. To the store and and bought like some rainbow trout and stuff and was like doing studies and but had to work pretty quick because of course they started to smell <laughs> um but yeah that's a bitchin painting and he crushed it on that one um such a great mood to it and he did a whole series uh i think it was for a book so he did a few different merfolk uh, paintings. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably just... That's one thing those older guys have over us, is they have those good work habits right i mean like i'll just hop online and and find stuff but it's not the same as seeing it in person and like in in the case of fish being able to like see how the light changes as you move on the you know how the light changes on the scales and all that stuff i just wouldn't want to deal with the actual fish and the smell and probably Denna would just want to eat them the whole time. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool, uh, cool idea, um, you know, of how they might breathe underwater. Um, I kind of just sidestep the whole thing and say, fuck it. <laughs> the gills make more sense. <laughs> and I like that more than the, uh... <clears throat> Um, I like that more than, like, putting the gills on the neck, which I think they did in Waterworld. You know, but... <clears throat> which was just kind of silly. It was a stupid movie. Alright, let's see, where are we at here? 
Okay. I also wanted to change the, um, uh, let's delete that. I don't need that layer. Put this up here. Um, I wanted to change the rock shapes here, the shape language in the rocks. I don't, I'm not happy with where I was going. It looks too just blah. Like, I don't know, not feeling it. So I'm going to be changing that as I go as well. Um, <clears throat> Give her like small kind of hints at what will turn into those big, those big spikes. Um, can zoom in on that a little, so you guys can see it a little better. Now I will often say, like, I don't use the boxes and cylinders method anymore, and strictly speaking, I don't, but I have noticed that I definitely think of them in that way. So I'll do these kind of contour lines often as, as placeholders and reminders, where, yeah, it's not a perfect cylinder, but I'm definitely still um, kind of thinking along those lines uh, to keep all the, you know, the perspective straight in my head and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I'm not as cool as I thought. <laughs> Now, I'm not thinking of this mermaid as, like, a child, right? Like, it's not like an infant mermaid. Maybe she's, like, in her 20s or something, and this one is, like, a hundred-something years old. And maybe they can live up to like three or let's say three hundred years. That's a good that's a good amount of time I think for them. Like 250 or 300. We'll call it that. Uh, 
Uh, once. Well, a couple times, I guess. Um, Autumn knows him better than I do. Um. Oh, stars. I was like, wait, what are you, stars? I think they're channels with a Z. So that, it threw me off. <laughs> Because I'm always playing Black Sails. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was like, which stars? What does this have to do with famous people? <laughs> yes, they should. I should at least get a cut of all their album sales for the Black Sails soundtrack. <laughs> Between Instagram and Twitch. I wonder if, if I've contributed at all to people buying this soundtrack. Or maybe they're like, weird. Piracy on the Black Sails soundtrack has spiked lately. <laughs> I do want to uh, bring in a bit of the... Um, you know, in my other piece, I have them with all those skulls, and so I want to I want to kind of keep that as a sort of through line, because you know skulls are cool. In the immortal words of John Paul: "Skulls will never not be cool. They keep your face up." And it's true. Or maybe he said skulls will always be cool because they keep your face up. Yeah, man, sturgeon get huge, and they get fucking gnarly looking, too. <laughs> like, later on, man, they just look like weird alien fish. They start out looking all normal, and then they just get weird. It's pretty rad. Um, I remember one time we were driving to, to uh, Sun Valley, Idaho... Uh, it was when I was in high school. My dad was taking my brother and I there uh, to go snowboarding. I guess he had always wanted to to ski Sun Valley. Um, and we were driving over, I think it was the Snake River maybe? And there's this part where it's just this gorge, like sheer drop. Way the fuck down, like... I don't know how far. It looked like 10, 15 stories down. And we looked, we looked down, um, and man, you saw these sturgeon, and even at that distance, they looked huge. And it was, I can't imagine what they would have been like if you were like up close to those things. Massive, massive creatures. Like, I mean, they had to have been, you know, 15 feet long, which when you're looking down at fresh water, that's, that's a big, big animal.
But yeah, I, I, I dig the stuff that Proko does. Um, you know, I think it's, it's necessary it, and well, well done. Like, I don't, I don't have the patience to go that far back, <laughs> you know, in terms of like the, that really structural, um, f- the, those fundamentals, like I really just want to get to drawing fun stories and stuff. So I, I respect anyone that teaches the fundamentals and teaches it well, because that it's a different, uh, it's a different skill set. Um, it's honestly, it's hard for me sometimes to think back to when I didn't know some of this stuff. Um, because I spend all my time trying to think forward, trying to think ahead and, and discover what I don't know yet. And so it, it's, it's a different kind of skill to be able to sort of look back, um, and remember like how to teach and how to learn some of those more fundamental skills. Those crazy anthropologists. Uh, I loved that I took an anthropology class, physical anthropology, um, in you know, when I was at Art Center, and I really liked that class. Um, you know, taught by a physical anthropologist, um, and uh, yeah, it was a very, very fascinating class. Um, I know a lot of people that took it hated it and they were bored out of their minds because, you know, they really just wanted to draw and they were just taking it to fulfill like a sciences credit. But I don't know. I've always found that stuff really fascinating. And I don't know how you can. Like all that evolutionary stuff is so cool. Of course, granted, it, I think it conflicted with a lot of their um, beliefs. So, oh well, tough shit, should have taken something else. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was cool. It was funny though, he was saying how like they, oftentimes they will get sort of petty and they'll, they'll like name messed up things after their, like, competitors and shit. (laughs) Um. Oh, you totally could do both. A lot of the, the anthropologists back in the day, they had to do both. And, like, if you've seen Master and Commander, that was a pretty good representation. You know, like, he goes out and he's doing, like, uh, pencil studies of 
of creatures that that people hadn't seen before you know and so they had to kind of do both of those so there's no reason you couldn't you know um like study that stuff become versed in it and then do artistic representations of what it might actually have looked like rather than just you know hiring an artist and then you have to kind of try to explain all that stuff and you know or through studying art and all that um you might be able to better explain it to like a professional illustrator of like how to how to depict it but yeah <clears throat> It's funny, as, as time's gone on and, you know, technology has improved and stuff, I feel like we've sort of gotten into this whole, like, kind of wearing one hat, you know? Like, oh, if you're gonna be an illustrator, be an illustrator, and, and to a degree, like, if you're splitting your focus, you're probably not gonna be as good as someone that is just focused on that one thing but I don't know I think at the same time like if you have a broader scope of knowledge that can help immensely And these days, you can learn so much online, you know, about how things work and all that stuff. So you can become fairly versed in something in a relatively short amount of time. Let's get our rocks hinted at here. So that's our background, okay. Yeah. to let's see here I'm just looking at some reference to get a little more specific on rocks on rock shapes I want something that maybe has a little different kind of character to it Yeah, it might be good to uh, focus down a little more. <laughs> or, you know, aim for the stars. Gotta start somewhere. See how far you can get. Maybe go for the uh, surgeon first, because you need good steady hands. The rest of it you can totally do as you get older. <laughs> Um. 
looking at these rocks that have a little little flatter of a shape still want some skulls here like in the crevices it's like how they decorate their fucking creepy island all the all the sailors all the pirates and poachers that thought they knew what's what whoops some tide pool action um Going to kick that stuff back a little more. <clears throat> um, I didn't, I don't know, they just didn't feel, they felt kind of mushy and uh, had a little, I don't know, it, it just didn't have the feeling that I wanted from them. Um, and uh, I I'd done this piece a few years back when Autumn and I and one of the finishing artists at Bond were doing these like illustration challenges with each other where one person would pick a like one week would pick a topic and and then we'd all illustrate um, based on that topic and then the next person you know we just we just went through the rotation and the next person picked the topic for the next week and um, and it was a lot of fun um, so I'd done this piece and I actually really like the rocks that I ended up with in there so I think I kind of want to go with something more along those lines um, at least I can show that piece right so this was this was that piece that I did um, you know, and I like, I like where it ended up, um, quite a bit. <clears throat> Has a nice feel without being like super tight, right? Like that stuff is pretty loose, but it has a good feel to it, a good feeling. I don't need it to be like super tight. Um, but it, it just like, I don't know, it does what I like, what I want it to do. Right? We got our big fucking eel dragon elder god thing. These dudes thought they had this witch cornered and poor guys. Poor guys bit off way more than they could chew. They're so fucked. Um, so anyway, I really like where these rocks ended up. So, and and part of that is just I like the uh, the flatness of them. It just gets a nice feeling of layers and planes and stuff. And so I want to kind of riff on that. Um, and end up somewhere more in that world. I like the lighting too. I dig that, you know, cloudy kind of darker vibe. It's tight. So that's kind of what I'm riffing on ultimately for this piece. <clears throat> Mm 
but you don't want to just reference your own paintings, right? Because then it becomes kind of a copy of a copy. So I'm looking at that for how I simplified some stuff because I think it was very successful in that way. But then I'm also looking at reference of rocks, you know? Um, and so what I want is this kind of like how it's sort of flat and then it starts to uh, climb. You know, I want I want that I want us to kind of feel the the shoreline sloping up. Um, oh, whoops! That's his. I was like, what is that? That's his sheath. So cool. Thanks for the follow, Black Fox. <clears throat> yeah, I hope you can join or join the next one too. Um, you can always check back afterward. This video will be up. Um, so <clears throat> honestly, I'm I'm almost wrapped with it for today. I do actually have some. Uh, errands to run so real life you know calls my name occasionally it's always good to just get things to a point where you know exactly what you're gonna do next because if you say, oh, I'll figure it out later, um, then oftentimes you will be stumped. And I always, I had read that about writing, actually. I think it was, I want to say it was a Hemingway quote. Uh, not not a quote, but advice for writers. He, and I think it was him that said, "Always stop when you know what's going to happen next. Don't just write until you're not sure, because then you won't really be able to pick it up again. You'll pick it up and you'll be stumped and confused. So always stop when you know." what the next scene is, what the next sentence is. So you can come back and just start writing. You know, and I, I feel like if you're working on a painting in stages, I think it applies to that as well. Um, let's, we'll just double her up so that she darkens a bit. We'll darken our dudes. to darken nah in fact whoops wrong one kick her back a bit Okay. Let's see. I want to get 
a hint. I mean, most of this stuff is going to be kicked like way back in the fog. Um, I was dealing with, I feel like some kind of crazy uh, lighting where I, I was trying to do too much with it before in this one. Um, and so it was starting to get confusing as far as like just light on dark on light on dark and, and like this area in the back here is working really nicely. You know, get a nice atmosphere, but then it starts getting too complex here in a, in a just unpleasing way with those lights hitting the, and I, sh I should have just simplified all that, I think. And it's just like terribly designed because I figured, eh, I'll deal with it later. And then it just made me not want to deal with it. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to, you know, it's best to design all this stuff right, right out of the gate. And this stuff really is, it's just going to be silhouetted, I think, against the fog. Um, and I have... Ideas for the lighting, but I'm not going to get into that just yet. I think for now, we will call it so that I can run some errands before the lunch traffic hits because that's just not fun. Almost. Let's, uh... Also, on that other one, the, uh... I wasn't sticking to the perspective that I had laid out, which is never a good idea. You know, I kept parts of it, I would sort of cheat it and be like, eh, maybe we're not looking down on this as much. And then other parts would be like, we're looking down on this. And it just overall just wasn't feeling right to me. So I didn't like it. All right, Maury, thank you for joining my man um yeah i think uh i think we're gonna call this for today um i'm gonna go get some stuff done and maybe later see if i can figure out why the hell this is lagging so much on something that it should not be lagging on <laughs> other than my poor old computer um all right guys thank you for joining um, hope it wasn't too boring watching me scribble around and yap on about this, that, and the other thing. Um, until next time, maybe if I can figure this out, because I'll probably be chipping away at it after work. Maybe. I've got a busy week, so we'll see. Um... But I'll give y'all a heads up if I jump back on. So, until then, that's it. That's all, folks. <laughs>